All right, Seth, you're on a mission to transform how families approach college expenses. So what ignited you to spark the revolution, the way we think about financial aid negotiation, and how did you envision how to find money for college.com in your trainings? What as a catalyst for this change? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on. It is an honor to be here. A big fan of the Money 911 show yeah. and how it all got started. It's all my dad's fault. So <laughs> he, every semester, uh, when I was an undergrad several decades ago, every semester he would call me and tell me he couldn't afford to keep me at Syracuse University and that it was too much money. And then I had to come home, go to a local school in Buffalo. I had to get a part-time job and work. I had to do chores around the house. I wasn't allowed to play loud music and I couldn't have any girls over. <laughs> and as a teen, you know, I was starting right. off as a 18 year old. This was very upsetting to me. I did not want to transfer home. I did not want to live at home and I did not want to have that experience. So I, I got used to it because he did it every semester. But before I, by the time I graduated, I said, you know, I don't want to starve as a waiter in New York City because my original life goal at the age of 18 was to be a Broadway star. I said, I kind of feel like I'm starving already. There has to be a better way. And along the way, I had picked up, I had kind of made my own separate degree program because college financial planning didn't exist as a profession back then. Right, right. So my dad drove me crazy and I said, there's got to be a better way. I'm sure other parents are driving other kids nuts. There's got to be a way to make this better. And I found one, but never in my wildest dreams at the age of, you know, 22, 23, when I started, did I think this would be, you know, a national firm that's helped, you know, thousands and thousands of families. And it's fabulous because it's such a, it's crazy. It's feels like an unyielding force and, and families, you know, it's hard for them to break free from the conventional thinking and embrace what your, your, you know, your strategies are innovative and, and you've got a way to sl slash all these soaring costs. I think it's fabulous. So what, how, what, maybe you could share a story that, you know, shares about the triumph of a family who against all odds embraced your approach and emerged victorious in the battle of extraordinary crazy I, fees, right? <laughs> I, I would love to. And, you know, I we've got shoe boxes full of them, but I'll start with one. <laughs> okay. And we'll insert the standard legal disclaimer, past performance, no guarantee of future yeah. success, results not typical. But we had a family who called us and said, hey, this is not normal. This isn't, they were literally, hey, our daughter's already at Boston University. She's, a, she's almost done with her freshman year. She did we didn't fill out the financial aid forms at all because we didn't think we would qualify so we didn't get any money and we paid retail sticker price we just wrote a check for the eighty thousand mm -hmm. dollars our financial advisor told us to call you we're honestly we're kind of skeptical because we already paid eighty thousand dollars and she's already there now this is what we call in our business a hail mary miracle pass right. normally we work with students before they get to college not after they're already there but we were able in their case, because they never fill out the financial aid forms, we went back in time, we filled them out correctly, and it turns out that the person who told them they made too much money and that they wouldn't qualify for financial aid was completely wrong and didn't know how to read a tax return for college financial aid purposes. Because <laughs> reading it for tax purposes is very different. And we were able to literally, within a couple of weeks of refiling, um, their daughter, they, their, they offered their daughter was given grants and scholarships of $40,000 a year. So mm -hmm. literally we cut their cost of college in half. Wow. That's, that's amazing. Did you do that for credit cards too? <laughs> no, we do not. <laughs> right. Well, it, you know, maybe you can unpack. There's a, like an alchemy behind the, the staggering. What is it? 19,000 per child, the debt, I, it's way more. How does how does this transformation happen? How can our listen, listeners, you know, replicate this inside of their own financial journeys? Sure. So our average savings, our average reduction in tuition is nineteen thousand seven hundred. Okay, per that's year. what you're saving per per year. That's what we're saving them per year Ooh. per child. Okay, that's huge. It is, and they, we all we have to start with 
the magic number when it comes to financial aid, which is called the expected family contribution or EFC for short. In the latest law, the government changed the name to the student aid index, the SAI. Don't know why they felt the need to change the name. But the expected family contribution is the magic number the federal government thinks that you can afford to pay for college. Now, that number that the government thinks you can afford to pay is never the number you think you can afford to pay. Right. It's always a lot more than you think you can afford to pay. Well, what I discovered in my painstaking, agonizing research many years ago was that that number, there is a formula for financial aid. And I think there's only three people there. There's a book on Amazon that's a thousand pages that explains in minute detail every aspect of the federal financial aid formula. And I think I'm one of the only three people ever who've read it because there's only three reviews on Amazon for it. <laughs> but I actually, it became the foundation of our company because that formula is manipulatable. The system is gameable. Mm -hmm. So depending on how you receive your income, depending on how you invest your assets, depending on how you hold equity and property, there are ways to manipulate that system and make you, in essence, look poorer on paper so that you qualify for need-based financial aid. Wow. Okay. Now, how can you pull back the curtain a little bit and how you do that? Are you taking it out of the person's name or social security? What's, what's, what is that? How so that? It, I, it depends on each person's individual financial situation. I wouldn't want to commit financial malpractice by giving a blanket answer and then have someone go follow it. And it turns out to be the worst case scenario. Yeah, yeah, I right. So it's, a, there's a combination of a couple of factors. Number one, we talked about the expected family contribution based on your income and your assets. Then the second part, which most parents don't realize, is every school has different financial aid packages. They're, the school formula for how much they award is public. So a lot of times parents don't realize, they think, oh, my kid wants to go to Harvard, but there's no way we can afford it. You know, he can go to the state school. What they don't realize is the state schools don't have any money. <laughs> so while the tuition might be $25,000 a year and you think that's cheap, if you look at a school, let's say like a Harvard or an MIT or a Cornell, that's $80,000 a year, well, they have multi-billion dollar endowment funds they have to give away. So with if you play your cards right and work the system right, a lot of times we can make the Cornells or the Harvards or the, Stan, or, you know, the Ivy League schools, the elite private schools, just as affordable, if not cheaper, than your public state school. What? Okay, how do you do that? <laughs> well, if you look at a school, let's say, I'm going through this right now with my oldest. My son is 16. He is a junior. He is busy. We are deep into the college process. And if we look at a school like his dream school, his number one school is MIT. His number two school is Cornell. They're both around $80,000 a year, which is absolutely ridiculous. It absolutely is ridiculous. Goodness. But if we look at the percentage of need, a family's need that they will meet, those numbers might be 80, 90, 100%. So mm -hmm. we might be able at an $80,000 school to get $60,000 in aid, knocking the tuition down to 20 grand, 30 grand. Mm. which is comparable to the state university my dad wanted me to transfer home to that was 25 grand a year. Wow, that's incredible. So is it basically positioning where your assets are and how they are, they're set up on paper? There's a lot of factors that go into it. Number one, yes, we want to position our assets and our income if we can. Number two, we want to apply to schools that are going to give us the most free money, mm. free money. that we don't have to pay back. Yeah. And number three, most parents don't realize college financial aid is negotiable. Hmm. You know, if you think about That's, it, if you ever flew yeah. on an airplane, Chris, yeah. and you asked the person sitting next to you who you weren't related to how much to pay for your plane ticket, I guarantee it's not the same dollar amount that you paid for yours. So yeah. when you get when your kid gets to college, if you ask their roommate's parents, what are they paying for school? It's probably a different number. Now, most parents, again, they don't know they can negotiate for more money. And two, if they do try and negotiate, it's basically just, hey, please give my kid more money. 
You know, right. college financial aid officers gets lots of cr- phone calls from crying and upset parents going, please give us more money. And their job, most people don't realize this, if you are a financial aid officer at a college, your job is not to give away the school's money. <laughs> Colleges are a for-profit institution. Even if it's a not-for-profit entity, their goal is to generate a return. So that financial aid officer, 67% of schools engage in something called financial aid leveraging. And this is from Money Magazine. I didn't make this up. Money Magazine says that financial aid leveraging is a formula that every school has their own formula, which determines what is the least amount of aid they can give a student that they will still come to the school. Hmm. So they are trying to get you to come and spend the most money possible, most amount of money possible. It's our job, almost like your child. If we were sports agent for an athlete, we got to negotiate the contract. It's our job to get the school to give you as much money as they possibly can. So if you just call them and you're the 27th parent that's called that day, upset, asking for more money, odds are they'll either say no or they'll give you that, oh, we'll authorize another $4,000 scholarship. Look what I found. And you think you're a hero going, I saved us four grand a year. Well, if you knew how to speak the language, how to play the game and how to talk to them, instead of that four grand a year that you were excited about, you might have gotten 20, 30, 40 grand a year. So it's like it. there's a mindset shift. I mean, I know we, that's a lot of a common thing that's said, but they have to be able to confident, have confidence to navigate and, you know, this process and become victorious. So are you doing the negotiation or do you teach them to do the negotiation? So our service is completely done for our families. So okay. part of what they pay us for is we do the financial aid forms for them. We help them pick schools that will give them the most amount of money that are within their child's criteria. We handle the appeals process. And if that fails, we physically call every school and negotiate for more money. Mm. Because who do you think is going to have more success? An emotional parent that doesn't know the numbers, that just knows my baby wants to go here, please give me more money. Right. Or an objective, unemotional professional who can say, hey, here's the Excel spreadsheet that shows how you underawarded them I'm sure it was just a clerical error. Can you adjust this so that they get the aid package you should have awarded them? Works mm. much better. Oh yeah, that's good. It's good, Seth. Very good. Yeah, you're. You know, you're. You're in the forefront. There are. I don't. I haven't seen a lot of people do what you do. And and what kind of groundbreaking trends do you foresee in in the reshaping? Because they're trying to pass all these laws and jam things down people's whatever's about. Mm about this topic um how can the the audience position themselves to be pioneers in the revolution that you're leading right now well that's a great question i want to talk about you at the forefront yes what's coming so as we're recording this the federal government has announced in the last couple weeks that the new simplified financial (laughs) aid forms will Uh be available for the first time december 31st They have also, this is December 31st of 2023. They have also said it used to be that when you filled out the FAFSA, your schools got your answers three to four days later, which meant they could turn around and figure out, tell you what your financial aid package was going to be relatively quickly. The problem now is number one, the form's not available till the end of the year. And two, the government already said, after you submit it, it's going to be three or four weeks before we get your data to the colleges. Oh which means kids aren't going to start getting financial aid offers until February, March Mm. and decision day is May 1st. So they're going to have less time to decide and less time to negotiate for more money. The other big thing that is happening right now is in that same law, the government removed the small business exclusion. What that means is if you, it used to be, if you owned a company that had fewer than a hundred employees, you did not have to report it on your financial aid forms. Mm. They got rid of that, which means even if you're self-employed and work by yourself for yourself, the government is now going to expect you to enter a valuation for your business, and that's going to count against you for financial aid. Oh, unbelievable. Now, the week they passed that law, yeah. within less than seven days, there were two senators, one from each side of the aisle, who proposed a repeal of that law saying, how are you going to determine the average small business owner, how are they supposed to determine what their business is worth? How are you going to audit that to see if they're being honest? 
Mm-hmm. How on earth are you going to police millions of small business owners just deciding on a valuation? And it's not fair because it's not like if your small business is worth $2 million and they're now going to say, well, you just lost $80,000 a year of financial aid. You can pay retail sticker price. Where are they supposed to get that money? It's not like your small business is just a bank account with money sitting in it that you can just pull it out and spend on college. So yeah. I'm hoping we have a petition going on change.org. We got, I think, about 70,000 parents who have signed it to get that law repealed so that the small business exclusion gets put back because it's really not fair to yeah. penalize you for owning a small business and assume, A, you know what it's worth, and B, you can just get their money. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's ah, that's incredible. Nobody knows about this. It just goes under the wire. And right. So maybe um, there's a lot of there seems like everything's sort of hidden. And unless they've taken the time like you have to learn about this, like same with my practice, you know, the things they wanted me to sell were just like all risk. And then I watched the roulette wheel of the stock market and and most people end up broke before they pass away because they're being given false advice and not told about safe money. So you've literally been similar to me where you've done deep dives. What hidden gems that are overlooked opportunities that families often miss and how can they unearth these treasures and fund the educational dreams that's a great question i think i think we we were talking about um you got to start with finding out what your expected family contribution is the government thinks it's going to be and then you have to figure out can you change it can you change that number are you eligible to get it reduced so that you get more free money then obviously there's looking at what schools will give you the most free money and then we've also got uh, a couple databases of reputable private scholarships based on every topic imaginable where um, you can search through them based on your kid's GPA, major, what school they want to go to, how you know all kinds of different factors and find the scholarships that they actually have a chance of winning. So I think those are all things to do that would help them save money on college and move in the right direction. That's amazing. And you literally help them before. So they didn't get into the trap. That is so huge right there, right? They can well, help. Thank you. Go on. Yeah. So that you help them, you know, manage or find. So then when they're picking the schools, they're not just throwing darts. They have the school that's going to give them the best deal, right? Absolutely. We want to look at all the factors, not just the money. We want to make sure it's going to be the right fit for uh, their student. I mean, if you look at the stats, I think it's over half of kids don't graduate in four years. Now it's almost five or six mm. because they change their major, because they switch schools, because they don't know right. what they want to do. So we try and make sure that, is it the right environment? Do they want a big school or a small school? Do they want to be in a classroom of 30 or a lecture hall of 300? Do they want to be in a rural environment, a urban environment in a city? Do they want to be in a suburban environment? Do Is Greek life important to them? Um, you got to look at all these different factors. What kind of extracurricular do they want to school with sport with a sports program? Not because they're going to play division one, but do they want to be able to go? Do they want to go to the stadium and with their friends and cheer, you know, for the team? You've got to look at, you know, does it have the right major? We've got to look at all of these factors and the money before they pick, because it's going to be, I mean, it's, it may be the most expensive decision their parents ever make. You know, if okay. you're looking at, four years is it it's comparable to probably what they paid for their house except they don't get a 30-year mortgage on it they got to pay for it right away unbelievable yeah exactly exactly well before we started the show you were telling me it's something that you were excited about and it'd be nice to be able to share that with everybody i i would love to so our process starts with crunching the numbers for you we figure out what is your expected family contribution the way it stands now can you change it and then we run a college cost analysis of how much money can we save you and let's take a look at your child's number one dream school and show you what you're in for both before we work our magic and after now we normally charge 197 dollars for that college cost analysis but if you're listening or watching the chris miller show the money 911 show and you go to how to find money for college.com forward slash training you can get that 197 dollar college cost analysis absolutely free And you'll also get a video of a training we did for, I think it was a couple hundred parents recently teaching them all the ins and outs that we didn't have time to get into today. 
Again, Fabulous. that's at how to find money for college.com forward slash training. That sounds great. How to find money for college. Boy, that makes me want to go back to college to get some more money. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fabulous. Seth, it's really a pleasure to have you on, on here. And I'm, I'm going to make sure that everybody I know listens to this. This is critical. This is safe money. This is saving money. This is smart money. Again, let everybody know how they can contact you. Uh, the website is howtofindmoneyforcollege.com slash training. And if you want to email a question before then it's seth s-e-t-h at how to find money for college.com fabulous seth it's been a pleasure to have you here and i hope you can help millions of people thanks so much it was an honor to be here <laughs> thank you and there you have it your passport to financial liberation today we shattered the mold redefined the game and embrace the power to transform your financial destinies. If you're ready to continue this thrilling journey, hit subscribe, share the inspiration, and leave us a review. Until next time on Money 911, where we defy financial gravity, stay audaciously wealthy. There's so much to learn about healthy money. I hope today's discussion brings you one step closer to securing and protecting your future. So you can get started on the right foot, go to meetwithchrismeller.com and schedule your free financial fitness strategy session. Thank you for listening and please subscribe to Money 911 so you don't miss our next episode, which includes health, wealth, and peace of mind.